Hi, we'll be looking at the Final Fantasy Ultimania Archive Volume 2 today, which covers Final Fantasy 7, 8, and 9. Concept art, quotes, and other development notes. Alright, let's get into it. We'll just be able to have a close up look at it. We won't be going into every single page of the book. First off, we've got the quotes from each of the main game. The highlight, the crystal represents the different games us. Green for seven, reddish, orange for eight, and yellow for nine. You have Final Fantasy VII, probably one of the most famous of the three. Very cool to show you the packaging design. Here's some of the characters' art. I do love this early concept art that so we're done in watercolor. You have a quick breakdown of the story, as well as the character relationship. I guess some will find this stuff too interesting. Here we have Cloud with his finished design, as well as his profile pic from the game, his personal data, and a whole bunch of quotes from him, and the main story illustration. Like in these, we got his uh, field design, they call it. And like the, the initial concept, looking quite a lot like a sack actually, interesting enough. We have Tifa, what's the finished art, same layout as Cloud. There's a Yuffie as well. Huh, there's a scene I didn't even know about that you guys go on that with Yuffie. Huh, that's pretty interesting. We have Sephiroth. Wow, I love him. Even, even so big, it's spread for two pages. I really like how well laid out this book is. This double spread is for the Shinra company. Then these are quite interesting. These are the other side characters. We like how they're all being reproduced in high detail. We have Zangen, Tif Tifa's uh, mentor. Guggenhagen finally cleared up what up Bobby. I was confused when we were in childhood, but it's actually just a crystal ball that it sits on. And uh, it's an image of the world map. It's just how to split this image in two like that. Here we have Midda, a very much a character of the game. And we're loving the wireframe behind the scenes as well. That's really cool. I love that. Whoa, I'm, gonna, I'm glad they were able to bring back this design in higher detail as they were intended in the first Final Fantasy VII remake. And we have a vehicle overview. And the Chocobo, one of my most favorite characters. Look amazing. And here's uh, the little icon you see of the Chocobo while you're racing. Here are some storyboard for the, the summer animation. Yes, yeah, you can actually read the storyboard notes as well. It's been beautifully recreated. For a person, I probably would have preferred to have kept the initial notes as that's another character to it. But I guess it makes it easier to read and have to go back and forth. Even the original documentation. Oh man, it's covering up quite a lot. All right, let's move on to Final Fantasy VIII. So then we have the game product designs, some of the earlier arts, beautiful sort of uh, watercolor finishes to them. Oh, loving this uh, Renault and Score dancing, and Laguna, and the moon with a cat. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure about this. This sort of uh, streams early 90s uh, Photoshop design. Because then we have some of the story and the character relationship. And here we are, the characters. Even if we have the, the art is finished, it's a really much more realistic finish compared to the, I guess, the kind of more anime style of Final Fantasy VII. We have Renoa, here we have Laguna, as well as have his in-game model. Man, this book has been about a lot of moments for this game. We have Idea, the main antagonist for the game. For I only got a, a half page, which is a bit of a shame, considering how important her role was in the game. We have some of the side characters. For the only pencil statues, there's no finished statues for them. We have the world map. It's a bit sad that Final Fantasy VIII got the sword end of the stick. Does have as much content as Final Fantasy VII did. We have the Bellam Garden. I bought this uh, 3D windows and there's a uh, concept art, digital concept art. Wow, this is so colorful, it's like a vibrant world. Here we have that prison which just drilled down. Really fascinating. Here we have some monster designs. I think Square actually had the better graphs of the PlayStation hardware, so we were able to really get a much closer one-to-one -to -one design where seven foot light was just transitioning extra content with featuring most of the uh, Guardian Force, which play a major role in but the gameplay and the story. You have some vehicle which follow the train still a little bit cyber, cyberpunk-ish, especially the Ragnarok spaceship which looks incredible. 
We love how this as a way out of the dimension and weapons of the ship. And this chocobo looks a lot bigger in comparison to the chocobo in Final Fantasy VII. Now it's more scorious. Once again, we have first storyboards. Wow, looks like a big jump in first stretches. All right, on to Final Fantasy IX. I don't know if Final Fantasy IX holds a special place in a lot of people. In a lot of people. Oh. Can't get over how amazing these watercolor finishes are. Yeah, we can't get over this watercolor design. So it harkens back to Final Fantasy 1 and 6 designs. Oh, I love this. The colors and the watercolor techniques. Man, this is beautiful. Just the way I use a positive and negative shape on Alexandria. There's a real mastery of the arts here. And the ladies are doing justice to plenty of space for the artwork to breathe and to be appreciated. Here we then the story page and the character relationship page. How is it in? I find interesting in this layout. This is a full page of Zidin's concept art and then just have one of the, the called CG image and then the real low poly profile pic. And here's the CG one and then the, the illustration and then his transform. Here we're really loving this, loving the, the different emotion type reaction for Zidane and then translate it to CG. And Vivi, oh, this is how beautiful these illustrations are. These concept art can really sit by themselves. This is so well done. Here's some concept design for Dagger. Princess Garner's uh, altar alias. Really that's a little bit different to how the game sort of came out. Uh, this is an interesting sight. Immersion expressions for Steiner without his hat. And here we have some interesting expression of Freya without her hat too. Look at Kuja, look at this page layout, so well done. From the first illustration to the full body image, this is a wonderful page of the concept art and these quotes. Oh, the use of color here, transform. <laughs> this is also incredibly well done. And here's the initial design of Kuja. I'm glad they didn't do with this one. I think it would give a really different feel to it. Here are some of the side characters, the queen. Oh, the illustration here, the movement, the colors, and the design, all incredible. What about this one? There's a bit of scale of the queen, how she compares to the other characters. I guess everyone's sort of different proportions, different designs. Here's a wonderful illustration of Beatrice. Ah, so amazing. And here's just a double page spread of all the different villages that you met in the game. Just love it. Just love to, just love the brightness and joy that this designs have. Yeah, some of the animals. <laughs> Very interesting cat design and dog design. Well, map is interesting. Here's some of the technical joints. Just incredible. Whole bunch of all the monster design. Definitely, the design definitely has the Final Fantasy 1 to 6 style influence, which is captured so well. Extra content, which includes the airship, which plays a major role in the guest story. We love the different designs. Here's a page just devoted to the summons. And the page spread on the different weapon designs. Oh, love it, so good. In just the shape of this one, there's so much creativity here. Some of the items in the game is really cool. Often it's just a name that pops up. But it's great, but it's great to be able to see it, how it's been designed. Oh, does it even have a, a counter height chart? And at the end, the, the 25th anniversary interview with the different, with the key staff that were involved in the games, which is really cool. And there you have it. Have you enjoyed that? If you, if you enjoyed that close up of the book, you can give me a like. If you'd like to see more up content, go over here. All right, bye.